Brooke Fraser, kia ora. Kia ora. So good to see you. So good to see you, Jack. Tell us about why we're here in this space, in this amazing space. Yeah, this storied space, as it were. Um, we are in the beautiful Roundhead Studios, which is a, a bit of an icon in music history in this country now. So many amazing records have been made here. It is, of course, owned by Neil Finn, mm. um, one of the, the greatest musicians of our time and certainly in our country's musical history. And we are here, and I am here because um, I have gotten to spend this week um, uh, immersed in um, creativity with some of our nation's most amazing songwriters. Mm. Um, it's curated by APRA, and, uh, and so we had a bunch of um, applications from incredible artists who wanted to come and be a part of this week. So we have four rooms um, going at any given day and we, there's three or four people in a room writing a song together. So it's, um, it's uh, very wild and uh, very special. Yeah. I, I'm going to put you on the spot here with a pop quiz. Do you yeah. know what you and Kanye West have in common? You've got a few things in common, <laughs> actually. You're both Grammy winners, but do you know what else you've got in common? No. The studio. Really? Kanye recorded here. He did. Wh yeah. What did he record? Uh, good question. Yeah. I should have remembered yeah. that. But I think it was like 2008, 2009, he was yeah. touring here. Yeah. And then one day he was like, i got to, I got to record stuff. i got to yeah. be in the studio right now. And yeah. I'm like, go to Roundhead, bro. Yeah. He, he made a great choice. Yeah. What, what's the talent like that you're working with? Tell it, us about something. Um, it's... it's um, the breadth of um, of gift in this place, um, kind of from the soil of these people, is so incredible. So we have um, we have an incredible folk kind of more folk artist here this week, um, Brooke Singer, who is um, part of the band French for Rabbits. We have Georgia Lines. We have the amazing Rob Ruha. We have um, Nayo, who um, excites me beyond measure. Um, Paige Tapara, amazing. Um, we've got some really amazing women, actually, um, and some amazing uh, men as well, of course. But um, just really diverse. Um, um, all of these people kind of coming into their own voices, or people who've had their own voices for a long time and just continuing to um, deepen their expression of that. So really, really amazing. It must be so humbling when, when you're surrounded by that talent and you can recognize that talent and you can see that they're looking at you going, oh my God, that's Brooke Fraser, that's Brooke <laughs> Fraser, that's Brooke Fraser. My, I, th I just, I. Th I do find that ridiculous because I also I haven't um, I don't really get called by that name anymore. So yeah. it's even weird for me to call that name. Like my children don't know those songs, which yeah. is so funny. Yeah. I um, I actually just played something in the water for my six year old last week, and um, and she was like, okay, play that again, and I played it again, and I was like, okay, I want to show you another one. I played her another one. She's like, uh, not so much. Play the other one again. <laughs> so they just um, she knows it's you though, right? She does. Yeah. But, but when I um, I showed her um, the album cover, yeah. she was like, who's that? And I was like, who do you think it is? And she was like, I don't know, who is that? And, um, and, and I was like, look a little bit closer. And then she looked at me and she was like, is that you? <laughs> I was like, yeah, she was like, that's weird. <laughs> to, to talk to us about the distinction then, because yeah. I mean, even some of our listeners, I'm sure, aren't quite aware that you can't, you have these different creative streams or different yeah. kind of dimensions, right? Yeah, I do. And probably the reason my daughter didn't recognize me was because I did have dark hair in the cover. And as long as I've been their mum, I've had different colors. You still hair. look very much <laughs> like the Brooke Fraser we've known for more than two decades. That's that's a bit crazy, isn't I know. it? That's yeah. very crazy. Um, yeah, I feel um, you know it, it's it's a it's a thing, isn't it? When you're kind of you've passed adolescence, you're entering kind of adulthood, um, and I don't know if it's like this as a you know as a journalist, but you know you're finding what your path is in this field that you feel passionate about. And mm. um, I think for me, um, I had. Um, I was, a, I was a songwriter and I loved writing songs, but I loved writing songs. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't feel the need to edit my own content, if that makes yeah. sense. So I, would, I wrote um, whatever came to me, and yeah. that would be songs um, about, about hypothetical characters. It would be songs about uh, you know, something that I was grappling with or a, or a, a, th a theme of tension, um, or it would be songs of, of worship to God. And so, um, and so obviously the, many of them found their place in kind of that, and I sound weird referring to myself in the third person, but in that Brooke Fraser expression, and I was called Brooke Fraser because that was my name, so I didn't think anything more about it. But then it turned out that this whole um, 
other group of songs that I was writing mm. um, also had a place um, in the church. And so for, yeah, for two decades now, I have been able to write and create um, music um, for, um, for all types of people in all, in all different places on a faith or a non-faith journey. And, um, and I, I did feel in periods um, immense pressure uh, from kind of outside forces to, to, to choose. And I'm so glad that I didn't. Um, I'm so glad that yeah. I um, just was like, I don't, I don't think I have to. I want to be able to make all of that that well, comes what, out of my who, life. I mean, you don't have to only yeah. say what you can, but yeah. what, what kind of pressure? Where, where was this coming from? I think... It, um, Record companies or...? No, I mean, I, honestly, my, um, I've, you know, I signed with Sony when I was 18 and they have only ever been um, incredibly supportive mm. of me just... Just be yourself, Brooke. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes I wish they had intervened a little bit more. When I look <laughs> at those early photo shoots, I remember, no. I remember going to a, my first photo shoot and I called them and I was like, hey, what should I wear? And I'm like, just wear your own clothes. And I'm like, I really wish. I was like, guys, you really could have helped me out a little bit because there's a, there's a whole, yeah. there's a whole girl. It's 20 years on, your daughter's not going to be recognising Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think just, um, just the real um, kind of sometimes feeling like you are, um, you are too one way for one group of people and too one way for the other group of people and not quite fully um, enough of either for people. Um, but I think that's where it's, um, it's uh, really valuable to kind of um, to know your own heart yeah. and to know um, and to have a conviction about, um, about staying on the path um, that is uniquely your own. And... Yeah. and um, reconciling with being misunderstood. I think that's a big part of it. And I think that that can only happen with time. And it's still something that I wrestle with. I wish, I, you know, I think we all long to be understood. We all long to be, um, because we all long to be known, right? Yeah. And um, so sometimes when um, you're doing something, or particularly with art, when you're pouring your heart into it, when people misunderstand it, you kind of think, oh, you you missed what I was trying to do there. But then that's also part of the, the humbling process and a part of the um, just kind of getting over yourself. And, yeah. do, you, do you feel like people still misunderstand you? Oh, absolutely. But I think I've, um, I've, I've, made, I've made peace with that. Mm. Um, and, uh, and, and I also think people don't think about you nearly as much as you think they do, is one thing that I've learned, you know. <laughs> like it's not that people are, are sitting down and looking at all the facts of your life and going, oh, well, maybe I didn't see things from this perspective. You know, mm. the people are, people have their own lives. So, um, so I think that's another helpful thing to, to um, come to terms with. People, aren't, people really aren't thinking about you. Yeah. <laughs> people have their own issues. Yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and everyone feels and, misunderstood. Yeah, yeah. Can I, can I offer you some armchair therapist um, Please. advice for next Please, time you Jack. feel misunderstood? If you're feeling misunderstood, <laughs> by the world just log into Spotify and then do a quick tally of your streams <laughs> because because it's seven billion by last count so seven billion just to, just to emphasize that there's seven thousand million streams I think you're doing something right that I mean how, how does how does that kind of um, how does that kind of figure sit with you if you just if you sit, sit back and reflect on that for a moment um, I think it proves that God is real <laughs> because I, I, I'm, you know, we've known each other a little while, Jack, you mm. know, seen each other every so often, every few years. Like I know me, I know what a, um, what a very flawed and normal person I am. And, um, and in so many ways, I'm, I'm the least likely, um, you know, I'm a girl from, from Lower Hutt, grew up by the Nine Eye Puni train line. Um, you know, my, my dad was a sports person, but mm. you know, that wasn't, bef that was before it was professional. So I didn't grow up with, um, in an environment of, um, great wealth or resource, um, or opportunity. Um, but I just had these songs in my heart and it is a miracle and I, and I don't deserve any of it. And, um, and so I just want to hopefully continue to live with an open heart and a grateful heart and never feel like I'm. I'm owed anything, not feel like I'm owed understanding or owed because all of this has been such a gift. Mm -hmm. I just want to, um, I just want to do, do well with it. I want to, um, yeah, always just honour um, the journey where I've come from and all of the people who um, have helped me, all of the people who've listened, mm -hmm. um, all of the people who've learnt in for all these years. It's quite miraculous. Yeah. Well, I, I won't embarrass you for too long with the accolades. I mean, 
Seven billion streams is just a preposterous kind of made up. No, I, yeah, number. I feel like, like it's that's just made up. No, I mean it is. <laughs> that is astonishing. I mean that that yeah. is just uh, that is that is incredible. Mm. And and you should be you should be just so proud of that. You are now a two-time Grammy winner as well, which I know has come about in a kind of a strange yeah. kind of way. So, how, how did you find out that you won the second Grammy? Yeah, the second one was funny, which is, is like, it's like, do I have a second? Do we? I don't know. But how I found out was I got a, um, I got a, a cake um, from my publisher in a box, got delivered to my house, and it was this chocolate dome, um, and inside were all these lollies. It was like a smash cake, so my kids loved it. But then on the um, on the on the top of the cake was this like um, Grammy and icing, and I, well, I was like, what? And I opened the card, and it was from the publishers, and they're like, congratulations on your second Grammy. So I emailed them. I was like, what do you mean? Like, but what do you mean? <laughs> what are you talking about? So yeah, I had written a song many years ago yeah. um, that had been. Um, been already put out, but then a, an, another artist um, uh, did their own version of it and won a Grammy for that album. So because of a rule change, which I think is a controversial rule, rule change amongst people, I'm not mm. sure, but because of that rule change, I somehow now technically have a second Grammy, but the cake is all I've gotten. Like, so, so we still don't It looks don't better know. than nothing. Yeah, it's a cake. It was delicious. You know, I, you can't eat the other one. So, so. That it wasn't like a Grammy turned up and then a cake turned no, up. No, just the just cake. Like, yeah. Still the, just the cake. There I don't probably know if I people get like a there. merit certificate, you yeah. know, in like a year or so. I don't know what happens with that. There are probably people out there who've uh, who are now Grammy winners who just don't even know because they didn't even get the cake. Yeah, exactly. They you didn't know? get a cake. Yeah. I got a cake out of it, so I'm I'm doing well. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be playing here with the APO in June. I am. Are you stressed out about it? No, I'm just... What a crazy sentence to hear. It's th I mean, it will be amazing. Yes. A, like a 70-piece orchestra yes. backing you. I mean, yeah, do you get a little bit nervous about that? Is that like a... I just feel like my life is a bit fake at this point. Like, what are we talking about? Like, what is this, um, there's a few things that happened in the past few years that I'm like, this is just like, um, Okay, what, what else, what else preposterous. happened that, that, made, that gave um, you that feeling? The, one of the other things that happened that gave me that feeling was, um, and I, I feel like I'm giving you way too long answers, no, so I'm no, sorry. No, no, this is great, we um, love it. But when I was 15 years old, um, I started playing the guitar. I had been playing the piano, started playing the guitar. I would borrow Mr. Wooden's from school, um, and a family friend, I'd borrow his guitar. I didn't even know how to tune it, so he would tune it for me and give yeah. it to me, and I would teach myself. And um, and in that next couple of years, I started writing songs much more on guitar. Ha became friends um, with a few older girls um, who were in their kind of early 20s who just kind of took me in for whatever reason because they were so kind. One of them was a social worker. Her name was Leah. And she um, had been saving, she was a songwriter, she was saving up for her own guitar. Yeah. And so she saved up and she brought a bass model Martin guitar. Martin guitars are the best yep. acoustic guitars Beautiful. in the world. Yep. So she, ga she, she came to me one day and with the guitar she'd been saving up for. And she said, Brooke, I know that I, I know that this guitar is for you. And she was crying because she'd been saving up for this guitar. Yeah. This was, and she was like, God told me that, I, that this is actually your guitar. So she gave me her guitar. That was my first ever guitar, my, this Martin. Um, I still have it to this day and I've played Martin guitars ever since. Yeah. Fast, rewind to a few years ago and I thought I was being punked but apparently not but basically Martin called me and offered uh, for me to come to their factory in Pennsylvania and mm. develop my own signature guitar. Mm. I'm the 13th woman in history to have been able to do this. And so um, so there's now the Brook Lidget Wood Martin guitar which is for sale. People people buy it and play it and it's um the sales are exceeding all of the expectations i got to g design the guitar of my dreams but most importantly i got to send leah um one of my guitars and say all of those years ago you sewed what was really precious to you mm. and to the life of this little teenage girl who just loved to write mm. songs um and and now um i get to give you this guitar this is this is kind of the fruit of what you planted all of those years ago. That's like that's 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 a profound thing, right? For life to yeah. kind of go full circle in that in yeah. that in that sense. Yeah. What did Leah say? She actually said um, she was like, no, no, no. She she insisted I didn't, but she had made a mistake. She had told me in one of her emails that mm. her daughter ah. loves to play. Um, guitar and write songs and I said okay if you won't let me give you one will you let me send one to your daughter and she was like okay so then she sent me this gorgeous video of her daughter Abby who I believe is 12 mm. um, opening up this 
beautiful guitar. It's a beautiful instrument, and um, and knowing that it's hers, and um, and I don't know if Leah ever would have explained to her why this was coming back to her because of, but you know, for Abby, it was because of the act of her mother's extraordinary generosity, like 25 years before. Yeah. So pretty, yeah. There's moments like that where I am just, um, I know that I'm I'm living in a miracle, and um, and yeah, I'll never take it for granted. It's extraordinary. Yeah. yeah. Do you, do you practice much with the APO before playing with them? How does well? Because the thing <laughs> is, know. you're sort of all I around the world so. all the time. Yeah. I, know. I mean, I'm not suggesting you need a lot of yeah. practice, but you know what I mean, right? I do. I do. I I do need a lot of practice. Is the answer, and I also have requested lyric screens because nice. <laughs> I'm like I can't afford to. <laughs> I haven't sung these songs, you know, in in many years. Yeah. Um. So I was like, please, can you just have some lyric screens planted around? Um. Because I don't want to screw this up. So yeah, we have um a number of days of rehearsal beforehand. I actually have a, a Zoom with the conductor Hamish next week to ask him advice because I'm accustomed to you know playing with a, a click in my ears. But oh yeah, right. There's none of that. It's all kind of you know. Fl- I need to learn how to be conducted. So yeah. I get to kind of learn a, a new skill. So he takes the lead off you or you take the lead off him? These are all the questions I have that's, to ask. I'm, question, I'm about yeah. to have a very steep learning curve, but I mean, how amazing. So, um, and um, we're working with a bunch of um, New Zealand's most creative and incredible mm. arrangers, mm. Uh, working on these arrangements. And um, one of them, David Long, actually just um, sent me an mp3 of his arrangement for a song called magical machine um a few days ago and that was the first one that i've heard arranged and it's just i mean better than i could ever have imagined or conceived of so it's um yeah it's gonna be um yeah kind of probably a little life shaping maybe yeah yeah well thank you so much for giving us your time we are so delighted you're coming back to new zealand and um, may the miracles continue because, <laughs> honestly, it, yeah, you have just had an extraordinary career so far and we all feel so proud. Thank you so much. That's very kind.